And I guess we're ready to go. Let's do this. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to my stream. I'm Pierre, your host. And today we are going to have a relatively small stream because we don't have that much to do for the weekend. Plus, it's Friday, and you know what that means, right? Okay, enough goofing around. Let's get down to business. We are going to start off like we usually do, by going over to the computer and taking a look at a quick recap of what we did yesterday. So yesterday we started off by drawing with a little compass some electromagnetic rings. That's what I call these uh, circles that we afterwards went and put some gold over them. Once we did rings all over our background, we added the background of white, what I call little planets, or you could call them bubbles, and we did that. That took us most of the afternoon. And today, what are we going to do? We're actually just going to put some colors. And hopefully, it will dry quick enough so we can put some highlights and uh, on these little planets. So, as not to waste any time, I am going to get uh, my orange paint out. And I'm afraid that we're going to have to put two coats of this orange. Uh, from uh, my past experience, one coat, no matter how thick I put it on, it always seems to require a second coat. So hopefully, I turned on the fan over there. It will help uh, dry uh, quicker so that we can put the second coat. And I would love to put the highlights on before this weekend because like that Monday when we come back into the studio, I'll be able to just either figure out what I'm going to do on this painting because I still don't know really, or we'll start the splattering of my background. I'm not exactly sure how uh, things are going to develop, but no matter what we do, we do have to finish the background of the painting. So that's what we are going to concentrate on today. And... We are going to, like I just mentioned, put the first coat of this orange background on these little planets or bubbles. I guess this brush will do just fine. I mean, I love everything that has to do with astronomy. So I always give references like electromagnetic waves or planets just to stay in that frame mind of the cosmos. So we are going to go over to camera number one, and we are going to uh, get the texture of this paint to be nice and creamy, nice and fluid, rather than here it's really thick. So we're going to water it down a little bit, get this so it will glide on beautifully. We don't want it to be too liquidish because we don't want it dripping all over the background. And we also want to keep it as opaque as possible. And even though we'll put it on relatively thickly, just to keep that opacity, I know that we will see the brush strokes as it dries. And we will have to put that second coat if we want a nice powerful, vibrant orange. So, right now, this is not obviously rocket science, right? It's just water. Orange paint out of the tube. I used to put uh, golden yellow and red and make my own orange, but the manufacturers of these paints were kind enough to do the work for me, so... There we go. Nice, beautiful orange right there. We are getting kind of to that texture I want. I have a feeling I might not have enough 
is we do have quite a few bubbles, quite a few planets, and if we're going to put two coats on, I definitely will not have enough paint, but we'll worry about that when we run out. So, let's get this together here. That looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yep. See, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but it has that nice, nice, really nice, creamy texture to this paint. And it will just glide beautifully on the canvas. I am pretty sure of that. So, I am going to bring this back up. We are going to tackle that upper left hand corner of the painting. I always start on the upper left hand, work my way down as not to get my hands in the paint since I'm right handed and work my way down like that. But first I have to clean off my brush. Start off with a nice clean brush. There we go. Okay, so now we can switch back and tackle our first planets. So let's do that. So that does glide on very nicely. And I don't want it to be too thick because I do want this to dry because no matter how thick I put on this paint, it will definitely need two coats. So I might as well just Put on the thin coat first, make sure it's dry, and then we'll put that second coat on. This is all we're going to do today, but like I mentioned, I would like to put some red highlights on this before we leave today for the weekend. There we go. Nice big fat little planet here. So I did give the title of the stream life on these planets. So what do you think? You think there's life in the cosmos? I think it's it's pretty obvious that there is. Now, maybe not intelligent life, but there is definitely bacteria and other kind of, I'm sure, unicellular life. When you just look at the odds and the amount of just planets, even if you look at the number of moons just in our solar system and the amount of stars in the Milky Way, and to know that there are hundreds of thousands of galaxies, how can there not be any life? Now, do the does that does that life on other planets? Do they create art, or is it just the ego of the Homo erectus? that likes to defy mortality by becoming a creator and having objects that will survive his death. Isn't that what I'm doing? Aren't I flattering my ego and hoping for immortality that my art will survive me. So there we go. This is going re relatively quickly.
There we go. I will move the camera over a little bit so we can tackle the top of the canvas over here a little better. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect because I am, like I mentioned, going to put in that second coat. And then after that, if, with my second coat, if there's a little mistake, I can catch up. And even then, if there's a little mistake, when I put the red border, the red shadowing, I can make up for the mistakes as well. So there's plenty of uh, leeway here. Though I must admit, I try not to. I try to do the best I can. There we go. Okay, this is a nice big planet right here. Beautiful. Okay. So, let's come on back down and go back to the beginning here where we'll go down another little layer down here maybe. I will move the camera over to make sure that I am not in the way, which does happen quite frequently when I'm concentrated. There we go. I sense that I'm going to have to pull my chair out because I do have a fragile back, a lot of back problems, and I want to be careful not to hurt myself just before the vacation because in France it's two weeks vacation for school and so therefore, I have my son at the house for the next two weeks. So, my son is uh, 16 years old and basically spends his time either going to play soccer, football, or playing on his Xbox with his buddies. Okay, very good. Let's go back into this little bottom corner here. I'm going to get my chair, which isn't very far. It is right here. And actually, I even have a little bit of water right next to my chair. Perfect. Because the paint is already drying up. The water is evaporating. So I'm just going to add a little drop. Work this like we did a few seconds ago. And then just work it up a little bit. I'm obviously going to have to make a little more paint. 
But anyways, we can continue here. I'll start with this big guy here since I have a, a paintbrush that is loaded with paint. Might as well take advantage of it. And there we go. There we go. Very good. Let's tackle this little guy up here. All righty. Very good. Okay. There has been another semi lockdown in France on all major cities. There's a curfew now from 9 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. in the mornings, which is a drag for many restaurants and bars, of course. This, uh, this virus is definitely taking its toll on people, or at least on the government or whatever. The sooner we nail that virus, well, there'll probably be another one taking its place. I mean, it's not uh, a coincidence that for the last 25 years I've been painting people solely with masks on. So, I'm not surprised things have gone the way they have. And how reckless and selfish man is. I used to do benefit concerts in the early 1980s uh, to save the rainforest. What's that, 30 years now or something? Maybe more? 40 years? To no avail? Okay. I'll just move the camera over a little bit, just like that. But first, I'm going to switch over to here because I do need a little more paint. So let's just add a little more of this orange paint, my faithful knife. I mean, if you add all these little planets together, I don't have that much of a surface to paint, really. The canvas is 57 inches long by 40 inches high, or a meter 70 by a meter 20. So it's not the, not the smallest canvas, not the biggest as well. But if you want to hang this in your house, you already need a, a fairly good wall space. There we go. Let's clean off our tools before we continue. There we go. So, is this fan working? I'm just going to step over here for a second. Maybe go on medium high for the fan. It's definitely drying, but not quite dry yet. But since we're not finished, it's no big deal. At least not yet. And like before, we are going to 
just work this paint to get the right texture. I'll bring this camera over here first. We can do that together again. Bring the camera back. I do have water over here. I am going to move so the fan doesn't blow in my microphone. Nothing more annoying than that. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do when it gets colder out. I mean, the temperatures have dropped quite a bit this past week. And we don't have any heating here in our studios, so it gets pretty damn cold in the winter, in the dead of winter. So I doubt I'll be putting the fan on <laughs> even to make the paint dry faster. I'm basically doing that because we are streaming and I don't want to waste anybody's time. Because if I wasn't streaming, I would just probably do what like I used to do is just go and play a video game on my computer and then come back an hour later when the paint was dry and continue working on it. But when you're streaming like that and we're sharing everything that's going on in the studio, well, I don't, I don't want to bore you with those uh, having to wait like that uh, for the paint to dry so we can keep on painting. So I try to figure everything out in such a way that we have uh, something uh, continuous and not too boring going on. Okay, this is like the perfect, you can see here, like the perfect little texture. Makes you almost want to eat it. Delightful little pudding. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom back in and go over here in this corner. And once again, I noticed that I forgot to switch cameras as I was mixing the paint in front of the other camera. Very unprofessional of me. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the stream. It's one of these things I have to remember to do. It's kind of difficult to be concentrated and then think about what I'm going to paint. And then think about also the cameras and stuff. So, okay, there we go. I will put on the double cameras like that. Now we have two views. Okay, very good. Let's get this big guy here. Very good. Now I'm going to stop for one second and I'm going to put some staples because I'm afraid as I'm moving on the painting like this, it is going to throw off my camera and uh, put it out of focus. So let me just come over here. There you go. Hopefully that will stable it a little better. There we go. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. let's tackle this last big guy right here. There we go. I'm 
I do remember as a kid, I was fascinated by my mom uh, when she put on uh, fingernail polish. I don't have a sister, I just have an older brother. And that was always something that was kind of fascinating to me, watch my mom uh, put fingernail polish. And this reminds me a lot of it. It's basically the same thing, I guess. Okay, is this the last one? I think it is. Now, I have a suspicious that I will not be able to do that... Uh, to do the shadowing of these little planets today. I know that in the past, and I was trying to be a little optimistic today, but uh, seeing how slowly this first coat is drying, I wouldn't be surprised if we would have to stop the stream right after the second coat. So it's, I don't know what to say. It's definitely dry, I know that much. It's dry enough that I can well, just about rub my hands on it. And areas where the paint was just a little thicker, well, that's not quite, quite dry yet. Which won't stop me from putting a second coat, but it will stop me from putting the highlights afterwards. Okay, so. What to do, what to do, what to do. So I am going to put on the second coat of orange. That's for sure. And we will see in about 10, 15 minutes, maybe less, what we're going to do after that. Okay, so be like before, I'm going to just bring in this camera up a little bit. Just like that. And I'll put it on the double cameras like that and let's tackle in the second coat now the second coat on the camera probably has absolutely no effect but believe me standing here I can see the difference I can see the paintbrush marks, scratches on the first coat, and that is what I'm trying to hide. And at the same time, it does make my orange paint more vibrant. There we go. But it was the same uh, when we started this painting and I put the second coat of the of the green paint on the background or for the camera, you couldn't really see what I was doing. It didn't seem to make any sense. But that is the difference between uh, being live and being on camera. Plus, it's not high resolution streaming as well. I kind of keep it, uh, the streaming, to a medium-low level just because if you have the stream at a very high level, people who have slower internet connections cannot uh, stream. It will be uh, all choppy and whatnot. So to make the 
stream the most fluid possible for the most people around the world, people living in the countryside, where uh, where they don't have high levels of connections and uh, and down down with bands, whatever it's called in English. So I keep my streams really on another, on a level that is kind of, uh, well, where everybody can stream it, even though it's not total HD, high quality streaming. Now on my other video clips, what are which are not streamed live, where I talk about various subjects on art, there it's in full HD, of course. I'm talking here now just about the streaming. Okay, let me bring this camera way over here. We're going to tackle that upper right-hand corner. There we go. Yes, a lot of people want to think that streaming in full HD is the best, best quality, whatever, best sound. But uh, people living in uh, rural areas or living in uh, I hate to say it, but third world country, well, uh, they won't be able to stream that HD, uh, full HD streams. And the whole point is to touch everybody, not just the Illuminati. There we go. Running out of orange paint here. Might have to make another batch right after this little planet here. Yeah, very good. Okay, so I'll come back here and we'll make another little batch of orange paint. There we go. There we go. Don't want to put too much paint because uh, I don't like wastes. Especially at the price that painting materials cost. Uh, go. There we go, a little bit of water. And this time I am going to remember to switch cameras as we work on the paint. Just want to blend that in a little bit together. And you can tell that it's really thick. It's it would be a nightmare to paint with a paint like this if we didn't work it with a little bit of water beforehand. So I do have water right over here. Actually, I'm going to move the camera over just a little bit like that. I can reach the water and get out of the way of the fan. I'm very paranoid about 
the fan blowing in the microphone. I find that to be extremely annoying, just like me forgetting to switch cameras or having the camera go out of focus. Those are the three annoying things that I try to avoid. And the worst is the camera going out of focus because sometimes my back is to the camera and I don't notice it. And then when I turn around a few minutes later, I notice the camera was out of focus. I've been having a lot of problems with that. So I put it on uh, automatic. I put it on manual. And sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. It's very, very odd. I haven't figured that out yet. So now we're getting to this nice little creamy texture here to finish our second coat there. That looks pretty good. So I'll bring the camera back up. We'll tackle this lower portion. I'll bring my chair over. I'll switch to the double camera view like that. And let's get these guys together very quickly. Very nice. If I had not uh, put that first coat in white, we would probably have to put three coats of orange. So, putting that first coat was very helpful. And I don't have to be quite as precise with this second coat, which permits me to go a little faster. And I don't think I've done it up here, a little bit out of the camera's range, but there we go. Very good. Yeah, especially when the canvas is moving, when I put my hand on it, that influences sometimes the cameras to go out of focus. So that also makes me nervous. Apparently it's not doing it today, but I'm kind of lucky on that one, I hope. Okay, let's just move the camera over a little bit. I'm just going to stand over here and look at the second coat. And it is drying quite quickly, quite quickly. So, if I find something to keep us occupied while it's drying, we will probably be able to put the highlights on today. There we go.
There we go. Let's just move over a little bit more. I'll just bring the camera over as well. Very good. This little guy here. And this big baby right down here. Okay, got that. And I guess I haven't done this one up here. I'm going to do that right now. Enjoy sitting down for a few seconds longer. Okay. Let's uh, get this chair out of the way, grab my bottle of water, rinse off the paintbrush. Cheers, excuse me. Oof, that feels good, tastes good, and where are we? Well, we are what we are, which is waiting for the paint to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this camera back a little bit, put it back to its original spot in the studio. All right, very cool. Very good. So, I am so excited. And as that is taking a few seconds, I just wanted to switch over because I've often mentioned that I uh, live in uh, Nice. And uh, Nice, as you can see, it's all the way down on the southern uh, border, right next to Monaco, right? It is right down there on southern France, where you can see Monaco. And right next to Monaco is uh, the city of Nice. If you see that little purple border that is the border between France and Italy and if you continue on the coast after Monaco you come to Genova and Genova is where you would take the ferry to go to either Corsica or you would go to Sicily they have ferries there you can load your car on the boat and just uh, go overnight and uh, arrive next morning in Sicily if you go up north on that purple line, you see the city of Torino, and that is the city that manufactures the Fiat cars. You know, Fiat stands for Fabricazione Italiana Automobile di Torino. So Fiat, Fabrication Italian Automobiles of Torino. So that is basically... Uh, where I am on south of France, and then to be even more precise, 
we are right in this section of Nice, which is the old town of Nice. You have that long green alley on the one side, on the eastern side of the old town. And then on the right hand side, you have that other green patch, which is in fact a little hill. So uh, that is basically uh, the old part of Nice that was built uh, I, you know, all around from the Roman days. So here you have the famous Promenade des Anglais, and here are shots of the buildings that were built in the 15th, 16th, 14th century, and that are just beautiful with these very narrow streets. This is the kind of street where my own uh, studio is on. Little streets like this, which are built to, to keep uh, uh, the apartments in the shade in the summertime where it's extremely hot. Of course, back then they didn't have any air conditioning. So by making the streets very narrow and the buildings fairly high, four or five flights up, well, it kept the apartments uh, relatively cool. And of course, there is the the old port of uh, of Nice. So there, that's basically where I live, where my studio is. And uh, hopefully that killed enough time that we can go back and check out, uh, see if our paint is dry. Dry enough to put in that red uh, highlight. And actually it is. It is dry enough. So I'm just going to move the fan a little bit over so it gets the far. So it gets this area dry faster. And we're going to start up there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make some, just get my red paint together. And I guess I'll use this uh, cap to do that. And I'm going to have to go and buy some more paint. See, I'm running out of red paint. And since I did order a roll of canvas and got a, got a text saying that it had arrived, it will be the perfect occasion to go buy some more red paint. And first of all, check out the rest of my tube, see what's missing in my colors. Well, I'll figure that later. And on Monday, on my way to the studio, I can stop by and buy all that stuff. So, like before, we are going to work our paint to get it to be the right texture. And I think I can actually just use the same brush. It looks like it would be the perfect brush for what I'm about to do. Okay, very nice. Very cool. So, I am going to do like before. I'm going to just come over to this camera. I'm going to get it ready a little bit closer like that. I'm going to bring it down and switch cameras and try to stay out of the way of the fan if it's possible. So. Just like before, you don't have to be a genius to do what we're doing. But it is a vital step in our painting. I mean, I enjoy doing this a lot. This, this part right here might seem extremely boring and repetitious, but I actually enjoy doing this so much that at home, I use a shaving brush and soap and... Uh, and uh, do the same process to shave with, like in those old cowboy movies where you know you go to the barber shop and get a haircut and a shave, lather up the brush. I do the same thing in my house rather than using shaving cream. That's how much I enjoy using a brush. God, I never knew I could speak so much. Boy, what a blabbermouth. Non-stop.
but uh, we are getting there. We're not quite there yet. It, this is an important step for me because I want this to paint to just glide right in the right area. And that's why the brush and the paint have to be harmonious with each other. Now that looks almost perfect. But we are just going to add that one last drop, which hopefully will bring everything together perfectly. Right there, nice and creamy. And I guess I can just add water as we go along. I'm just going to just look at this one more time. Make sure it's the right texture. I think I cannot go wrong if I just add one more drop of water. There we go. Just going to add that last drop and blend it in. Yeah, I think that was a good move. It's definitely not not going to drip, as you can see. It won't it won't drip on the canvas, so it's not that liquidish, and yet it will keep its opacity the way we want it. Okay, that looks just right. So I'll pull the camera back. I'll bring it back up on that upper left hand corner where we're going to paint, right up there. And first, I'm going to just switch over cameras so I can wipe my brush clean. Put this down here. There. Very good. Okay. So I am also going to just step back and take a look. Whew, take a deep breath. Okay, this looks, does look very dry. looks perfect. Okay, so I guess I can tackle that. And I am going to lower the fan because there's no way in the world I want to catch a cold before going on vacation or before my son's vacation. So, all right, so where are we? Okay, let's switch cameras then. Very good. And let's tackle these guys. I'll just move the camera whisker over so I'm not in the way again. There we go. Well, that was pretty damn good, just the way I like it. I think maybe I will just attempt to zoom in a little more so you have an idea of what I'm doing. Hopefully it won't go blurry on us. There we go. That is exactly how I like it to be. Very good. All right. Uh, hi. I'm sure you thought I was going to forget about the camera. Fortunately, I didn't.
Come on now. There we go. Okay. So far so good. I'll pull the camera back a little bit. Move it over. And we will continue with these highlights. So this is a nice big one. Maybe I'll just uh, see if we can zoom in a little more. There we go. Very cool. Very good. Now here we don't care. It's nice and thick for the simple reason that it has all weekend to dry. So where are we going? No, we're going the other way. Okay. So let's get these top guys all done. There we go. I go on the double cameras there. And I'm going rather quickly because it works better when I go quickly. If I go too slowly, it's the hands get shaky. Uh, Whatever. So, as long as I'm in the field, I guess it's the main thing. You see there, I did quickly, and boom, comes out just right. First shot. There, two. Okay, I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit, and then we're going to go back to the beginning. There we go. Lower down here a little bit. I'll zoom in just a little bit like that, hopefully, so I can tackle several at the same time. I might be in front of the camera. I apologize if I am. There we go. Get this guy here. Yes. Plus you have to remember there's going to be splattering on this. Plus down here I might do something else. Uh, I have all weekend to think about it. I have like, this is the wonderful thing about painting and creating something is that you have uh, unlimited possibilities. And I know that I'm going to make the decision only Monday when I show up in the studio. I can think about something all, all weekend. But uh, that doesn't mean that I'll go with it once I get in the studio. So and that's not always like that. Sometimes obviously I do have an idea and I stick to it. But I must admit, the paintings I enjoy the most are the ones that are just spontaneous. When I make the decision at the last second on what color I'm going to use and whatever, the results are a lot more pleasing for me because they were not uh, premeditated. It keeps that element of uh, improvisation alive. Especially that I'm not, as you notice, not an abstract painter, so I don't rely on, you know, on luck. Let's put it that way. Well, I know a lot of painters probably get pissed off 
Can we sing that? Not. All right, moving all along. Very good. We're getting very close to the end of our stream. And then when it's the weekend, we can go and play. That's right. Go and play. Stay young. Have fun. You live only once. That's what's the beauty and why life is so precious. You only have one whack at it. So you got to enjoy it. There we go. Move my little chair over a little more. I guess I might as well move the camera also a little bit like that. So that everybody's included. And I just noticed that I didn't change my pants and put on my painting pants on today. Big mistake. Fortunately, no no spots yet. Ugh, how could I have forgotten that? Okay, well, no harm done, but thing to do either. That is on thick. Okay, it's got all weekend to dry, fortunately. Okay, what's going on here? I'm losing my control of my paintbrush. I'm going to just clean it off, even though there's just two, two little guys to do. But still, we are professional, and we don't want to get sloppy just because there's one or two more planets to be done. Very good. There we go. And we just have this last one to do. Just get my chair out of there. And we have this last one on the edge here. There we go. Very good. Okay. So, that is what we have done today. And you got to admit, it does look nice, doesn't it? That orange and red and the green and gold. Just a nice combination, if I may say so. I don't know. Am I allowed to make compliments to myself? I don't know. So, very good. So, let's just take a different look at it from a different angle. There we go. I could probably just zoom in a little bit with this one.
Okay. All right. So, there we have it. Well, thank you again for joining me on this fairly short stream, about an hour and ten minutes. And I hope you'll join me again uh, Monday at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Time for the continuation and discovery of what we're going to do. I have no idea, but I do have all weekend to figure that out. And uh, I want to wish you all a wonderful weekend. I want to thank you again for joining me. And I'm going to leave you, like usual, with my schedule and by saying, Ciao, mes amis.